Hey guys and welcome to another fun and easy machine learning tutorial on convolutional neural networks. So what are convolutional neural networks and why are they important? Well, convolutional neural networks or convnets, also known as CNNs, are a category of neural networks that have proven very effective in areas such as image recognition and classification. Convnets are very successful in identifying faces, objects and traffic signs apart from powering vision in robots and self-driving cars. A convnet is able to recognize scenes and the system is able to suggest relevant captions, for example, a girl playing tennis. While this image shows an example of a CNN being used for recognizing everyday objects such as humans, objects and animals. There are also convnets involved in playing games such as StarCraft, Doom and Mario. CNNs are therefore an important tool for most deep learning practitioners today. However, understanding convnets and learning how to use them for the very first time can be sometimes a bit daunting. But don't worry, you're in good hands here at Arduino Startups. If you are new to neural networks in general, I would recommend you check out my lecture on artificial neural networks and then return to this one. Please subscribe and click that bell icon to join our notification squad. Let's take a look at how it all got started. So Linet was one of the very first convolutional neural networks which helped propel the field of deep learning. This pioneer work by Jan LeCun was named Linet 5 after many previous successful iterations since the year 1988. At that time, the Linet architecture was mainly used for character recognition tasks such as reading zip codes, digits and much much more. Since then, there was a pause in the development of convnets and neural networks in general. And this is because of a lack of significant computing power at the time. Convnets started picking up around 2012 with AlexNet amongst others. We'll discuss the various convnet architectures a bit later in this video. The convnet architecture. Let's take a look at the four main operations in the convnet which are the convolution layer, non-linearity also known as ReLU which is rectified linear unit, 3. Pulling or subsampling, and then 4. Classification or fully connected layer. These operations are the basic blocks of every CNN, so understanding how these work is a very important step in developing a comprehensive understanding of continents. We'll first try to understand the intuition behind each of these operations as we progress through the lecture. Before we start with the main operations of CNN for image classification, let's recap some image processing 101. Essentially, every image can be represented as a matrix of pixel values. A channel is a conventional term used to refer to a component of an image. An image from a standard digital camera will have three channels, red, green and blue. You can imagine those channels as three two-dimensional matrices stacked over each other, one for each color, and each having pixels in the range of 0 to 255. A grayscale image on the other hand has just one channel. For the purposes of this video, we'll only consider the grayscale images. So we'll have one single two-dimensional matrix representing an image, and the values of each pixel in the matrix will have a range from 0 to 245 as mentioned before, where 0 indicating black and 245 indicating white. The Convolution Step Convnets derive the name from the convolution operation. The primary purpose of convolution in the case of convnets is to extract significant features from the input image. The convolution operation preserves the spatial relationship between pixels by learning image features using small squares of input data. We will not go into the mathematical explanation of convolution here, but we will try to understand intuitively how it works over images. If you recall earlier, every image can be considered as a matrix of pixel values. So consider a 5x5 image, whose pixel values are only 0 and 1. We'll keep it easy and stick to binary images instead of grayscale image. Also consider an arbitrary 3x3 matrix also shown over here. Then the convolution of a 5x5 image and a 3x3 matrix can be computed as shown in this animation. Let's take a moment to understand how the computation is being done. We'll slide the orange matrix over the original image green by one pixel, which is also known as a stride, and for every position, we'll calculate the element-wise multiplication between the two matrices. And then we add the multiplication outputs to get the final integer which forms a single output from the output matrix in pink. Note that the 3x3 matrix sees only the part of the input image in each stride. So here we have 1 multiplied by 1 which equals 1, plus 1 multiplied by 0 which equals 0, 
and then we continue adding all the products until you see that we end up with 4. In CNN terminology, the 3x3 matrix is called a filter, also known as a kernel and also a feature detector. The matrix formed by sliding the filter over the image and computing the dot product is also called a convolve feature, activation map or the feature map. It is important to note that filters act as feature detectors from the original input image. We can see over here that different values of the filter matrix will produce different feature maps for the same input image. We can perform operations such as edge detection, sharpening and blur just by changing the numeric values of our filter matrix before the convolution operation. This means that different filters can detect different features from an image, for example edges, curves and much much more. In practice, a CNN learns the value of these filters on its own during the training process. Although, we need to specify parameters such as the number of filters, filter size, architecture of the network and some other parameters before the training process. The greater the number of filters we have, the more image features get extracted and the better our network becomes at recognizing patterns in unseen images. Non-Linearity Using ReLU In our lecture on ANNs, we discussed the Rectified Linear Unit or ReLU Activation Function, which is a non-linear operation. ReLU is used after every convolutional step. ReLU is an element-wise operation applied per pixel and applies all negative values in the feature map by zero. The purpose of ReLU is to introduce non-linearity in our CNN, since most of the real-world data we want our CNN to learn would be non-linear. Remember that convolution is a linear operation or rather an element-wise matrix of multiplication and addition. So we account for non-linearity by introducing a non-linear function like ReLU. Other non-linear functions such as 10H or sigmoid can be used instead of ReLU, but ReLU has been found to perform much better in most situations. The pooling step, spatial pooling also known as subsampling or downsampling, reduces the dimensionality of the feature map but also retains the most significant information. There are various types of pooling such as max pooling, average pooling, sum pooling amongst many others. In practice, max pooling has been shown to work better. So with max pooling, we define the spatial neighborhood, for example a 2x2 window, and take the maximum element from the rectified feature map within that window. This reduces the dimensionality of our feature map. Some benefits of pooling are that it makes the input representation or feature dimension smaller and more manageable. It also reduces the number of parameters and computations in the network, therefore controlling overfitting. Fully connected layer the fully connected layer is a traditional multi-layer perceptron like we discussed in our ANN lecture, but that also uses the softmax activation function in the output layer. The term fully connected implies that every neuron in the previous layer is connected to every neuron in the next layer. The output from the convolutional and pooling layers represent high-level features of the input image. The purpose of the fully connected layer is to use these features for classifying the input image into various classes based on the training dataset. For example, the image classification task we set out to perform has three outputs. So if you look at the game StarCraft, we have the Protoss, Zerg and Terrans. Apart from classification, adding a fully connected layer is also a usually cheaper way of learning non-linear combinations of these features. Probabilities that we obtain from the fully connected layer sum to 1 because of the softmax function. This helps us to distinguish a bit more easily the output of the CNN. So if the output is 60% dog or 40% cat, by a majority vote we determine that the output is possibly a dog. How it all fits together As discussed earlier, the convolution and pooling layers act as feature extractors from the input image while the fully connected layer acts as a classifier. From this image, you can see how it all fits together. We have multiple convolution, ReLU and pooling layers to extract the best features. There can be numerous of these layers and which we feed them into a fully connected network where we get the output of our CNN which is a set of probabilities of what our objects are in our region of interest. So we set our input image and our target vector predicts that we have a marine in our target vector. You want a piece of me, boy? Training a ConvNet deserves a video on its own, but let's briefly discuss the process. So ConvNet training essentially means that all weights and parameters of the ConvNet are now optimized to correctly classify images from the training set. We can use backpropagation for this. When a new unseen image is input into the ConvNet, the network could go through the forward propagation step and output the probabilities for each class. 
For a new image, the output probabilities are calculated using weights, which have been optimized to correctly classify all the previous training examples. If our training set is large enough, the network will hopefully generalize well to new images and classify them into correct categories. Convolutional neural networks have been around since the early 1990s. We discussed the LeNet earlier, which is one of the very first convolutional neural networks. Some other influential architectures are LXNet in 2012, ZFNet in 2013, GoogleNet and VGGNet in 2014, ResNet from Microsoft in 2015, and DenseNet, YOLO and SSD in 2016. You can check out a paper by Jonathan Huang et al called Speed Accuracy Trade-Offs for Modern Convolutional Object Detectors. The goal of this paper is to serve as a guide for selecting a detection architecture that achieves the right speed memory accuracy balance for a given application and platform. Okay, so that is it from me. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Click that bell icon if you'd like to see more machine learning tutorials. Also, producing these videos consumes a lot of time and coffee and we would really appreciate it if you could support us on Patreon. You can find the link in the description down below. If you'd like to download the script to this video, please click the link also down in the description to download for free. Stay tuned to the next lecture where we'll learn how to implement a convolutional neural network in Python and Keras. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next lecture.